are joining us for another themed week here on Property Tribes. It is going to be powered by Nova Financial and joining me all this week is my guest. I'm delighted to have on board Paul Mahoney, MD of Nova Financial. And Paul, we're really excited about this week because we're going to call it um, Property Topics Going Head to Head. And it was really um, born out of this whole idea of discussion being such a great way to learn because it teases out the issues. And it's really what Property Tribe's um, knowledge base is based on. You know, lots of people having differing opinions, teasing out those issues, and the viewer can look um, across all those opinions, see who is making those opinions, and then start to build their own opinion on that particular topic. So you and I, um, we don't always see eye to eye, um, but but that's healthy, isn't it? We can we can yeah. learn from each other. Absolutely, and yeah. look, thanks for having me back. Um, it's great to be doing another another sponsored week with you. So that, that, that's brilliant, um, and, and I completely agree. Uh, healthy and friendly discussion is, is always a positive thing. Um, you know, I think we'll both agree that there's no there's no one right way to invest in property. People have different approaches and different opinions, um, and, and and numerous different ways can work. So so we'll discuss that in more detail. Um, you're right. We don't always agree a hundred percent on our own strategies, but but that's fine too. So hopefully some of our discussions will, will tease out. The, the logic supporting various different strategies and and, and create a, a good forum for discussion. Well, that's awesome. Um, and we are going to be covering five um, different topics throughout the week. And the first one um, we're going to go to is flats versus houses. Um, but before we go there, Paul, I just wanted to really just ask, um, obviously we're recording this post COVID-19 lockdown. There's been very, very significant changes in the property market, lots of uncertainty. Have the strategies that you uh, promote um, to your clients at Nova Financial, have, have they changed at all? Good question. Um, I like this question and I've been asked this question quite a lot lately. Um, and the reason I like the question is I like the answer more. And, and the answer is no, our strategy hasn't changed um, from before all of this. And I suppose the reason I'm proud of the answer is our strategy has always somewhat been about mitigating risk. Uh, because we are aware that recessions happen and that, you know, sometimes it can be quite easy to make money in good times. But what's not so easy is surviving or even thriving through bad times. Um, so, so our approach hasn't changed all that much because it's always been in consideration of the fact that things like job loss and recessions and, you know, struggling economies do, do happen every sort of 10 to 15 years historically and therefore we've always tried to account for that. Absolutely and I'm glad you you mentioned mitigating risk as well because I think this way of learning through hearing differences of opinion um, and forming your own opinion rather than just listening to one person and accepting their input as a complete singularity I think that's a lot more um, healthy way to, to learn and mitigate risk because you're not just getting one source of information. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think when it, when it does come to following somebody's advice or guidance on, on an approach, you, I think as, as an individual investor, you also need to be aware that at the end of the day, it's, it's you that's riding the roller coaster. You know, it's, it's your investments and therefore you need to be well aware of them and comfortable with them and, and happy with that approach for you. So completely agree. Taking from different sources and, and I suppose working out what logic you most agree with mm. and, then, and then running with that. But then perhaps not, not just sticking to the one strategy forever either because things change, things evolve and your situation is likely to change and evolve as well. Absolutely. Property is a very long term investment. And what I think we would both say is don't be offended if somebody doesn't agree with you. It's not it, it's not a personal thing. If they're interacting in a professional manner, putting through, you know, reasoned arguments, you, you shouldn't feel offended by that. Yeah. You should welcome it because you can test your own opinion on their opinion um, and uh, as we say learn and grow through that and do you know what Paul I actively seek out people 
people that don't agree with me because I want to test my opinion to make sure that my logic is, is as strong as it can be. Absolutely. And, you know, in my experience, and especially through having conversations like these, a lot of the TV and interview type stuff that I've done, generally the most entertaining is when you disagree with someone, but you've both got very good points to support your argument. So, so I'm pretty confident this is going to be one of those. Good. No, I know what you mean, because sometimes you go to panel debates and everybody just sits there going, oh, yes, I agree yeah, with yeah. so and so. And it's actually <laughs> quite dull. So we, we like a robust and healthy debate. And that is what this week is going to be all about. So um, for our first kind of installment in the blue corner, that's me. I am going to speak in favour of houses. And in the red corner, that's Paul. Um, Paul is going to speak in favour of flats. Now, I know, Paul, that, um, you know, it's not as black and white as we're making out because I totally agree with you that there are certain circumstances where, where flats um, are, are, are good. But my main um, kind of reticence about them is that they are leasehold rather than freehold. And they generally come with um, service charges and ground rents and they can, you know, greatly eat into an investor's cash flow. So that's my number one reason why I'm not so keen on flats. So what okay. would you say to that? Yeah, look, it's a very good point. And I suppose the whole, the service charges and ground rents is, I suppose in most people's uh, view, the, the, the downside. Um, I suppose what I would say to that when comparing the two, actually, no, I'll, I'll take a step back um, as to why in general, both for me personally and, and for our clients at Nova, our approaches generally focus on flats. And, and that is because I think the way that we look at property is slightly different to, to how some people look at property. And that is, we will look for the best possible location, firstly, and then we will allow that location to determine the most suitable property. Now, what that has resulted in is generally over the past few years, we've been focusing on uh, places like Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, Central, being driven by those areas having an abundance of all of the types of things that drives demand for property. So just very briefly, in short, that's what's led us to these locations. And when we look at the household makeup, um, in general, in those areas, your average person per household is about 1.8 people on average across those cities. And therefore, it's a one or a two bedroom apartment that makes the most sense for that household makeup. So that's kind of what's driven us toward that uh, based upon sort of ticking as many of the fundamentals boxes as we can. So just in short, that's what's got us there. Um, when, uh, I suppose just we'll take one step further than that, generally we will be focusing on low, low maintenance properties. And what I mean by that is new or newish rather than old, because there's a big difference there in, in what the service charges are going to cost you because of that maintenance. Um, generally, when we've compared, compared the likely maintenance of a house to reasonable service charges in a building that has, you know, reasonable services, and what I mean by that is, obviously, if you add in things like gyms and pools and 24-hour concierges, that adds a lot of cost. But, <clears throat> you know, average services, let's say, the, the costs aren't all that dissimilar over let's say a, a seven to ten year period when you consider things like replacing boilers and you know maybe fixing the roof every now and again and giving the house a repaint all the things you don't have to do with a flat generally aren't that dissimilar and therefore if a flat makes more sense in a location well i suppose on that point sometimes a house just makes no sense in a location you know there's no um, but you know i suppose that that's another point to consider there is we'd be more focused on the location than the type of property no that i get that and it would be very <laughs> foolish for anybody to say oh don't touch flats and that's not what i'm saying i do see um good reasons for them um myself we've got flats in london 
uh, mainly in North and East London. We've had them for 17 years now. They've done extremely well. So I think flats in city centres are definitely worth considering also because very often they are entry level in terms of price and also in terms of rent. So they're the most affordable property in the area. So there will be a lot of tenant demand and we know that a lot of um, young singles want to rent in city centres, etc. So um, I'm less a fan of them um, outside outside of city centres for and, those and reasons. I completely agree. You know, that <laughs> we're <laughs> agreeing too much here, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I agree. Absolutely. I, I, and that's what I was talking about, the location. I think the location and, and the the, skew, the skewing of demand in that location should determine the type of property. Now, that's what's led us toward that type of property predominantly. Um, <clears throat> in fact, all of my properties are flats, my personal portfolio, and predominantly most of our clients go for that type of property. And that's more about the location than it is the type of property. Um, and I'll, I'll just cover other points on that. You know, so far as you mentioned about service charges, another thing some people get caught up on is is the length of the lease now in my opinion if the lease is sufficiently long it's what's sometimes referred to as a virtual freehold so for example if you've got a 250 year lease sometimes we'll get asked questions about well every year that lease reduces the value of my property reduces and that's not necessarily true because generally the value of the property will only start to reduce once the lease length is closer to 80 years. So if it's 250, most of us will only live about 85 years. So that's well beyond the time frame you're going to own the property. I think, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are recording this post COVID-19, a lot of changes in the property sector. And one of the key trends that com that is coming through in terms of priorities for tenants is um, outside space of some description and also somewhere to have a home office. So I think anybody thinking of investing in flats going forwards, they need to look for, fl for flats that have balconies or roof terraces or are close to a green uh, outdoor space um, and also uh, where there is room you know maybe a box room where they can they can work from home if, if needed and obviously you know very good internet connection um, is a huge part of that as well and flats yeah. often do have um, you know extensive uh, broadband connectivity which is in their favour I'm agreeing with you too much Paul <laughs> And, and look, I think you're right. It's all about livability. There is going to be more focus moving forward on livability than there has been in the past. And that's likely to be driven by the fact that more people will be working from home. So <clears throat> again, something that's always tied into our approach has been livability of tenants, but also saleability at some point in the future. And considering the fact that the biggest portion of people you might be selling to, well, you're likely to be selling to, will be owner occupiers. You know, they make up in most areas about sort of 50 to 60 percent of the market. They're very emotional buyers. So for things like the, the flat facing the right direction, such as south or southeast or southwest, um, uh, having a, a, a usable floor plan, um, you know, uh, for example, you don't want an ensuite in a one bed because then you have to walk through your bedroom to get to the bathroom. Little things like that that some people wouldn't think of. Um, and a yeah, nice, nice well-lit apartment, maybe if it's, in a, if it's in a tower, maybe slightly higher up in the building might be more desirable if it's got a few, all these sorts of things. Whereas in the past, in a city centre, you could pretty much buy anything and it would rent reasonably well and you'd probably be able to sell it to a landlord reasonably easily as well because, the, because it rents quite well. I think that the focus will move away from that type of property a bit more so toward more desirable properties. So, so that there needs to be a bit more um, livability consideration as opposed to it just being about the numbers for landlords when buying those types of properties.
I like that word livability. Um, put yourself in your tenant's shoes. And I think one thing I would also add to, to what you just said, Paul, was I think it's a good idea to buy, a, if you're going for a two bedroom flat, to buy one with two equal size bedrooms and uh, make sure one of the bedrooms is en suite because that does open up the, fl the flat to friends that maybe want to share and there won't be somebody wanting the smaller kind of boxy room. So I think, yeah. I think that's a, a good point as well to think about the layout of the flat how much you know you mentioned where it faces there can be a huge difference in the atmosphere of property if it's you know facing over a bin store or if it's facing over some beautiful views of of a river um, and it's it's probably worth paying a little bit extra to get those those premium kind of views and quite often what we find when we look at a new build or off-plan development is those things aren't necessarily priced in hmm. sometimes they are but quite often they aren't um, you know, for a great example is where I'm talking to you from now. This is a southeast facing corner apartment. It's much more livable than the same floor plan facing the internals of the development. But they were pretty much very similarly priced. Um, and, and this is much more rentable and much more saleable than those properties. So that's something worth looking at based on what we've just been discussing. Yeah, I think my final point about um, houses is that um, you own the freehold, you can um, make additions to them, maybe go into the loft, add value, extend, develop. Obviously, I'm sorry, Paul, but with a flat, you can't do that. <laughs> and, and I think that this that all kind of comes down to uh, where I probably should have started is for, for most of our clients and for most of the properties, for example, that I've personally bought, the, the, the aim was to be quite passive. You know, so it's been more about taking X amount of money, put, take, getting some leverage, putting it into this, pro, you know, for example, 50 grand into a 200 grand flat. It's going to give me X amount of net yield a year. It's likely to grow by X amount. And over 10 years, this is about what I'll achieve. And not much more than that. It's been a very uh, unemotional and commercially minded approach. And what we found is that worked quite well for your mum and dad investor that wants to better utilize some resources they've got spare, but don't really want to be too hands on. So we, we, we found we think that works quite well for that sort of person. However, you're completely right. Um, you know, if you do, do want to be a bit more hands on, or if you want to progress in your sort of property knowledge or how complex you, the, the, the deals you're doing are, then there's definitely more opportunity to create value in houses. You mentioned the, the mum and dad investor there. You have to be careful that there aren't too many mum and dad investors in your building. Uh, very often developers do sell off plan um, to investors and you can end up uh, with uh, a lot of flats uh, under ownership of, of landlords, all seeking tenants. But I guess, Paul, you know, that just boils down to due diligence like any, any property purchase would. It's a good point. It's a good point. It's a point that's often raised by lenders. Um, however, I don't necessarily agree with it. So this, <laughs> this is going well. I'm disagreeing <laughs> with you. Um, the reason I don't necessarily agree with it, depending on the location this is. Now, if, if this was a block of 200 flats, you know, 10 miles from a city centre, completely agree with you. Filling that building when they're all for let might be difficult. Um, if it's a block of 200 flats in the centre of a major city, it doesn't really matter or make much difference if the whole building is landlords or if most of them are owner occupiers and there's only five landlords because you're not just competing against that building. You're competing against all the other buildings within a mile radius, at least. And therefore, 200 flats in the center of Manchester is a drop in the ocean. Whereas 200 flats, you know, out in a secondary regional town is, is a lot to fill. So I think that's another thing just to consider. Sometimes that point doesn't matter all that much, depending on the location. Well, I am going to agree with you there, Paul. Um, I think that's a very valid point. Um, well, we're going to uh, conclude today's edition of our property topics going head to head. And um, that's it for today. We hope you've enjoyed this first discussion and we would uh, invite everybody watching to join the conversation in the thread and say your 
pros and cons, um, the difference between investing in houses and flats. We want to see what you think. We've just tried to spark a discussion here, but we want really, uh, you know, to encourage the community to get involved over the following week um, and really start listening to the discussions and then uh, adding your thoughts to them as well. Because we know we've got lots of experienced landlords uh, and also we welcome, you know, the thoughts of newbies as well. They often see th things th through fresh eyes. So let's hope we can get the whole community engaged over the next week or so. Um, tomorrow, our topic is going to be um, investing close to home or investing further afield and again Paul and I do share differing views on this so please do join us tomorrow as our uh, property topics going head to head uh, week powered by Nova Financial continues Paul and I will see you tomorrow mm -hmm.